morning edition. Once there's some degree of freedom of movement, I think the Bahamas is going to see a great, great rebound. The Prime Minister optimistic ahead of his first national address for the year. Also, in the first quarter of this, this year, we hope to be able to get that done. Plans on the way to open new passport offices in our family islands and... Our greatest concern in reopening school for this um, semester is really the anxiety level. The Catholic Board of Education navigating through COVID-19. We have all of these stories and much more when the morning edition comes right back. It's more than just our name, more than just our achievements. It's our nature, and it's where we put our customers. At Bahamas First, we've refreshed our look, but our nature remains the same. We design insurance solutions that protect our customers from life's uncertainties, whatever they may be. We equip you for the future so that you can recover stronger. Bahamas First, what's first for you comes first for us. Morning edition, taking a look at your weather forecast this morning. High pressure is generating light to fresh breezes over the country. In the northwest Bahamas, it will be partly cloudy to cloudy and warm with isolated showers. For the central and southeast islands, expect it to be partly cloudy to cloudy, warm and breezy with widely scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms. will get up to a high today of 82 degrees with an overnight low of 64 degrees. Let's take you out to our streets this morning where Lloyd Allen and the morning traffic team is standing by with your Tuesday traffic commute. The traffic report is sponsored by Bahamas First. First in insurance, today, tomorrow. Well, I hope you've gotten your Tuesday morning started. This is your first look at traffic and today we're coming in from the intersection of Nassau Street and West Bay Street. Now, one of the first things that we want to point out to motorists are these various markings and striping projects throughout the capital. Over the past several weeks, we've heard the concern from several motorists who say they're still unsure about speed limits throughout the country. Now, to assist with this, the Ministry of Works has placed various markings like these in areas around the country in key locations uh, to assist drivers and equip them with safety as they make their rounds. This morning, also, we want to uh, speak to those commuters, those early morning commuters, using areas like the West Bay Street area, Carmichael Road, East Street, Blue Hill Road. Um, of course, our traffic is on the street at this time, so as you're making your commute, expect a slight delay as you're uh, getting to your various locations. That's been a quick look at your Tuesday morning traffic report. For the morning edition, Lloyd Allen, ZNS Network News. Off the top this morning, Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, will speak tonight at 8 p.m. in a national address. At that time, the country will learn more about the government's plans to combat COVID-19, the COVID-19 pandemic. This will be the first time the Prime Minister's first address for the year and will be carried live on the ZNS network and all social media platforms. Prime Minister Minnis, who was also the Minister of Finance, recently spoke about the state of the country's economy and when a significant rebound may take place. We have a lot of projects um, that have been, that are about to commence, projects that are on course. We think that would assist us in, in moving forward. We also think with the vaccine coming on and the first world countries moving as aggressively as possible to vaccinate their population, I think that would offer some degree of relief. Individuals, I think, have been cooked up in um, one particular location for a long time. And I think once there's some degree of freedom of movement, I think the Bahamas is going to see a great, great rebound. And, and that's why it's essential for us to follow the protocols that we have in place, um, continue to have our country recognized as a um, 
somewhat COVID, somewhat um, free area. As, of course, you know, New Providence and Grand Bama may have its challenges, but manageable, nothing to be too concerned about. But most of our islands are COVID free, and therefore, for all intents and purposes, we are a COVID free destination. Some good news coming in from the Ministry of Health in the fight against COVID-19. In the latest release, there are no new cases. Health officials indicated, though, that a low number of reported COVID-19 results on Monday and the reported cases may not be a true reflection of the burden of the disease. There are currently four hospitalizations, 1,446 active cases, 6,331 recoveries, and 175 deaths. More than 55,000 tests have been administered. The capacity at the morgue of the Princess Margaret Hospital continues to be a concern for officials. An update was provided at the Ministry of Health's latest press conference by Administrator Mary Walker. I can actually indicate that that situation, if anything, has not evolved to uh, where we want it to be as yet. We are still challenged with overcapacity of the morgue at the Princess Margaret Hospital. Residents in the family islands will soon get some relief from having to travel here to New Providence to have their passports processed. Foreign Affairs Minister the Honorable Darren Henfield says plans are underway to open new passport offices on a number of family islands within the coming months. Very soon we, we hope to, to open these smaller offices in Ekjuma, um, in Agua, in Luther, and uh, Long Island. We're being able to go in and, and collect the passports. In the, in the current environment, we either have to move a mobile passport office to those islands. And in the first quarter of this, this year, we hope to be able to get that done. Uh, in order to, to save money in this, in this uh, fiscally challenged environment, we seek to use already established government offices or agencies where we can simply set up a kiosk with trained individuals and the implements that we need as a passport office uh, to be able to facilitate the process. Minister Henfield says training exercises will take place for family islanders. To train locals to, to be able to, to do the jobs that, that we need. Of course, you know, we have, we have such facilities and, and other places like Abaco where people, people who, are, who are locally there who are trained uh, are able to, to facilitate the, the application process and, and the pickup of passports, uh, which, is, which are expedited through New Providence, of course, but they're sent to them for them to administer the collection. Bahamas Power and Light confirming that the four rental engines secured by a tender process won by local company Sun Oil are necessary to show up generation until the new plant station D is completed and pumping power to the grid. As a matter of public concern, BPL reiterates that the new rental units burn propane fuel which is more environmentally acceptable than diesel. Also, the new rentals are more fuel efficient than the rentals currently being used by BPL. BPL CEO Whitney Hasty says the new rentals are expected to contribute to ensuring reliable, lower emissions and a lower cost of electricity, while the generators will also replace some of the existing rental generators. The 96-ton engines were transported from Awak Key to the Blue Hills Power Station over the past few days. BPL thanks members of the public for their patience as efforts continue to improve the safety, reliability, and cost of electricity in this country. Got more right after this. You're watching The Morning Edition. Hey, have you heard? ZNS is everywhere you are when you download the new ZNS app. Whether you're on the move or just kicking back. Miss something on the news? It's there. Want to keep up with a live update? It's there. Or just want to listen to your favorite station? It's there too. Download the app now from the App Store and Google Play Store. It is normal to feel overwhelmed, lonely, scared, or sad during a crisis. Coping can be difficult when your daily schedule is interrupted. Drinking may feel good, but is not the best way to cope with stress. It can worsen your mental and physical health and impact your family. So how can you cope? Keep physically active. 
like taking a walk or dancing. Cook and eat nutritious food, including fruits and vegetables. Engage in indoor activities like playing games and staying connected with family and friends. Meditate, encourage yourself, or enjoy music. Still feeling overwhelmed? We are here to listen. This message is brought to you by these partners. Students enrolled in Catholic schools across this country return to the classroom on January 5th and according to its director, building a stronger relationship with parents and calming their ongoing fears is paramount in providing top quality education amidst COVID-19. Here's Lloyd Allen. Our greatest concern in reopening school for this um, semester is really the anxiety level. Director of the Catholic Board of Education, Claudette Roll contends that the board has worked extremely hard in recent months in protecting its complement of staff, students, and by extension, parents. She says COVID-19 has forced adjustments in education, but continued efforts remain to best maintain the traditions and standards in place at the facility for the past 131 years. We're coming into a new situation. We have not had the in-person learning and so now that we have the blended model, the hybrid model, where we have in-person learning as well as virtual learning, that when we opened Tuesday, January 5th for our students, everything went very well. And as the CBE pushes into the new year and term, there have been a decline in overall student numbers. Roll says it's more to do with physical restraints and less with financial limitations faced by parents. In May of last year, we gave the parents an opportunity to really participate in a payment plan. She says the one-year plan helped to reassure parents, allowing all to refocus on learning. Overall, there were new students enrolled, predominantly, she says, in kindergarten. New students really came in at the early learning level. And so we, we had limited space from grades 1 through 10 because we know that we have to physical distance. Google Classroom is at the foundation of the board's learning management system, cemented by months of staff training, allowing all 2,300 students to connect and participate in blended classes. For the morning edition, Lloyd Allen, ZNS Network News. It's anticipated that the report surrounding the shooting death of a Royal Bahamas Defense Force Marine at Government House will be handed over sometime this year. That coming from Minister of National Security, the Honorable Marvin Dames. The committee would have completed its report. Uh, the report has been printed and hopefully, I don't know, sometime uh, I'll see if it can happen this year, the availability of the committee to present a report. Uh, to present it to me and then I take it on to cabinet. I mean, there, there, there are recommendations uh, that, uh, you know, steps have already been taken to, to address those recommendations. You know, we're not going to, there's some things that can be done almost right away. We understand that. The committee would have done a, a pretty good job and uh, we're just waiting on the chair. That was the final time to, uh, to present the report. A close call last Friday as police arrived to the scene of a two-car collision on Eleutheris Queens Highway. Officer in charge of the area, ASP Anthony McCartney, says the incident happened shortly after 9 a.m. and involved a Honda Civic and a Honda Odyssey. Police received a call in regards to a traffic accident which occurred on the uh, Queens Highway in the area of the Bluff Road. As a result, the officers responded. On their arrival, we received preliminary reports are that uh, two vehicles were traveling, one traveling north in the west, western lane on Queens Highway, the other traveling south, uh, when both vehicles collided. McCartney says both drivers were taken into the local clinic for non-life-threatening injuries, but warns others to obey the speed limits on the island's main thoroughfare. Um, in regards to poison traversing that area, um, we would just want to appeal to members of the public uh, to be vigilant while you are uh, behind the uh, wheel of a vehicle. Uh, pay attention to what's going on. Do not be distracted. Stay focused on the road um, when you're traversing the streets. 
The long lines wrapped around the entrances of the food distribution centers and at financial institutions for assistance is evident that the COVID-19 pandemic has dealt a hard economic blow to many Bahamians. The strong demand for assistance and additional responsibilities may be forcing people to take their own lives. Psychologist Dr. Wayne Thompson recognizes the number of suicides and attempts that are growing rapidly in this country. These individuals want to stop the pain, the hopelessness, the discomfort of not being able to survive. These individuals want to get rid of that stuff. And as a result, this is what leans them towards suicide. Dr. Thompson implores all Bahamians and residents to pay close attention to the warning signs. When you see an individual beginning to lose interest in something that they once enjoyed, that's a mammoth red flag. When you see children start playing around with their food, not necessarily eating it, but moving it around the plate, something deeply is troubling and bothering them. It is a red flag. But because we are so intoxicated with things, we believe that things solves all things, when the truth of the matter is, there is only one thing that can cover everything, and that is love. Stay close, we've got more right after this. You're watching The Morning Edition. This holiday season, let's celebrate life by protecting it. Remember to follow all public health protocols. Wear a mask. My mask protects you, your mask protects me. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Carry your personal hand sanitizer to sanitize on the go. Use technology to stay connected while we're apart. And don't forget to physical distance in public spaces. Have a happy, healthy holiday. Hi, I'm Dr. Pinder. During this global pandemic, we ask for you to be responsible. As we fight the COVID-19 virus together, we would like to encourage you to do the following. Wash your hands. Cover your mouth and nose with a flex elbow or tissue when coughing and sneezing. Practice social distancing by staying six feet apart. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. And if you must go out, wear a mask. We stay here for you. Please stay home for us. To those of you on the front line, we salute you as we continue this fight together. This message has been brought to you by the Ministry of Health in conjunction with GD Media Solutions and this television station. love most about working for the Bahamas tonight is that we don't only focus on New Providence. We cover the entire Bahamas. We have a team here in the Northern Bahamas that is ready to bring you the stories, the people, and the news that matter to you. From point A to Z, from covering hurricanes to elections and everything in between. Stay COVID free. Remember the three S's. Sanitize, social distance, and stay inside. Welcome back to the morning edition. Buddy Heald and the Sacramento Kings picking up their fifth win of the season last night, 127 to 122 over the Indiana Pacers. Buddy finished the game with 18 points. Kings head coach Luke Walton called this the best win of the season so far, and Buddy agreed. We are sort of uh, paying attention to details. Uh, we know we uh, gave a lot. We, we, we tricked some games off, and uh, it wasn't ready. And, uh, you know, I think everybody just more locked in and uh, get back to winning basketball and uh, try to turn this thing back around. We had a day off and uh, from the, from shoot around, from the film, watching film and I, uh, you know, watching from what Portland did to us and uh, and how we played against uh, the Raptors. You know, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't wasn't our best basketball we've played all year, and uh, we're playing better basketball. We've been playing better. We've shown that we can play better basketball than that, and uh, today was a good day to come out there and uh, prove everybody wrong. 
DeAndre Ayton and the Phoenix Suns also in action last evening. They lost 128 to 107 to the Washington Wizards. A pretty quiet night for the Bahamian big man. He had just eight points and six rebounds. A good to the 2021 calendar year for Bahamian Shaquille Butters. The senior forward from Williams Baptist University has been named the American Midwest Conference Men's Basketball Player of the Week. Butters scored 16 points and added nine rebounds in a win against William Woods. He he then followed the up with the third double, double of the season, scoring 20 points and pulling down 10 rebounds in another win over Hannibal LaGrange. For the week, Butters shot 45% from the field and 80% at the foul line. Butters and the Eagles are back in action again tonight as they host Missouri Baptist. A good start to 2021 for fellow Bahamian Valerie Nesbitt. The senior guard had a season high of 18 points as the Ole Miss Running Rebels women's basketball team came up short just in the upset bid of 14-ranked Mississippi State, losing 60-56. to Despite the loss, Ole Miss head coach and Grand Bahama native Yole McPhee McQuinn says she's pleased with her team's effort. We're the 10th youngest team in the country. We came up in here and we didn't have one of our major big threes and we fought. We learned tonight our players understood that we belong. Like Nesbitt, Bahamian sophomore forward Javon Ferguson also posting a season high in his last outing for the William Jewell Cardinals. Not only was this a season high, but a career high as Ferguson posted 17 points along with seven rebounds in a 74-62 loss to Southwest Baptist. Ferguson and the Cardinals play again on Thursday against Drury University. The college swimming season has resumed junior Isaac Bastian and the Florida State Seminoles opening 2021 with a win over LSU. Bastian finished second in the 100-yard breaststroke in 55.40 seconds. He was also third in the 200-yard breaststroke in two minutes and two seconds. Bastian and the Knowles are out again on Saturday against Gardner-Webb. Stay close. You're watching The Morning Edition. healthcare worker, thank you for fighting on the front lines against COVID-19. It is normal to feel stressed when taking care of others who don't feel well. But remember to take care of yourself. Don't forget to rest between shifts, eat healthy meals, engage in physical activity, and stay connected to family and friends. Avoid harmful coping strategies like drinking alcohol. For managers of healthcare workers, the same tips apply to you. Here's how you can help. Consistently give updates, rotate staff between high and low stress level functions, encourage work breaks, and ensure that they know where they can find help. We are here for you. pandemic, it is our duty to ensure that all citizens, residents, and visitors are adhering to the COVID-19 safety protocols. Every business establishment must have distance markers six feet apart, indicating where each customer must stand at checkpoint points. Have a hand sanitizing station visible at the entrance of the store for all customers to sanitize their hands before entering the store. I am Ambassador Otario Farangen of the COVID-19 enforcement team. Save a life that may be young. This message brought to you by the Ministry of National Security in conjunction with the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas.
Welcome back to the Morning Edition. Former police officer Elvis Moss penned his first book called Forgive Without Regret. The 35-year police veteran now reservist spent the last four years putting old stories he experienced in his new book. Moss says the book can be purchased on Amazon and in bookstores across the capital. The Morning Team caught up with Moss at the Montague Shores to find out the reasons behind what he hopes to be a bestseller. He says readers so far have given the book some rave reviews and he hopes it continues to be an inspiration to others. My book is actually based on a story why I was a police officer traveling through the islands. Uh, a lady in Exuma, she told me that her father, who went off on a contract, um, after he abandoned the family, stopped sending letters and money. When he came back several years later, there was an 18-month-old girl in the house. He was not the father. Wanting his family back, and the mother wanted him back in the house. They work out their difference and decide to give one another rallies, realizing that both of them made mistakes. And that child, not growing up, not knowing that that's not her real father, but the fact that was she became the apple of his eye. We have a special guest in the studio this morning, 12-year-old, 12, 12, 12 rather, 7th grade student at St. John's College, Lazaria Johnson, an aspiring singer. Lazaria has also written a song entitled Stay Strong. Lazaria, welcome to the Morning Edition. Good morning. So talk to me a little bit about how did your singing career uh, start? Well, I originally started off in St. Agnes Primary Choir, where they had me singing solos and... Yes. And I know you wrote the song, um, Stay Strong. What was the inspiration behind this song? The inspiration behind this song was after I saw the devastation after Hurricane Dorian, I wanted to give the, the Abaconians and the Grand Bahamians, um, I wanted to give them hope that it will always be okay and remember to stay strong. Now, I know you wrote the song in 2019 and you put it on hold, I guess, to release it. Why do you see the need to actually do that? Well, I just wanted to wait for a bit because I just felt unsettled that I didn't want to release it yet. And are there any other songs that you're in the process of writing? Yes, ma'am. I have two more songs in progress. And, to, and so tell the, the public what you're going to be singing for us this morning. I'll be singing my song, Stay Strong. Ladies and gentlemen, Lazaria Johnson. Stay strong cause God is by your side Don't give up cause he won't give up on you Stay strong cause God is by your side Stand up, stand tall Live life to your fullest Be strong, be strong Stay strong, stay strong Stand up, stand tall Live life to your fullest Be strong, be strong Stay strong, stay strong I know you are devastated But don't give up cause God is always there I know that you've been through the storm But I know you can make your way up there Stand up, stand tall Live life to your fullest Be strong, be strong Stay strong, stay strong Stand up, stand tall Live life to your fullest Be strong, be strong Stay strong, stay strong Just trust and believe Nothing is impossible without Him And don't give up Because everything is possible Never give up, yeah. Stand up, stand up. Live 
live life to your fullest.